Welcome to the fourth tutorial in my rigging series. So far we've built a skeleton and skinned this goblin character to it. If you've been following along, you know this goblin is from the Goblin Abyss, an action RPG currently in development for iOS, hence its very low polygon count. In this video we're going to build the spine controls, so let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is create a spline IK up the spine. What well, I want full control over this top joint, so I'm going to duplicate it with Control D and then open up the hypergraph and it, it uh, duplicated its children as well so let's delete those and then rename it it was spine free we duplicated so let's call it spine free dupe for duplicated and I'm also going to set its radius to 0.75 make it smaller so we can see it now I can create my spline IK so I'm going to go skeleton, spline, uh, IK spline handle tool, open up the options. And root on curve we want. This means the, the bottom of, these, of the joint chain will follow the curve. Uh, I do not want to auto parent my curve. Auto create curve, uh, I do want it to create my curve for me. And I want it to simplify the curve to number of spans 2, which gives us 5 CVs. Uh, the twist modes we're going to be playing with later, so we don't need to touch those. So now I can select the second joint and the duplicated joint, and that creates our spline IK. So, as well as creating an IK handle, this also created a curve for us. If we select the curve and move some of its CVs, you can see it. Uh, pulls the skeleton with it. So next we're going to start on some control joints. So I'm going to open up the hypergraph because I want to duplicate just the spine joints which is pretty much the top of the skeleton. Hit Control D to duplicate and then delete everything except the four joints I want. To make them easier to see I'm going to set the radius to 0.5 and quickly rename them. This is actually going to be our forward K skeleton. So I'm going to call this forward K base. And the next one could be uh, forward K01, forward K02, and we'll call this one forward K end. Now I also need the two end joints duplicated again. So I'm going to select the forward K end, do control D, and I'm going to name this one, this is going to be our shoulder control. And I want it parented to the forward K end. So I'm going to hit uh, select them and hit P to parent. I also want this one duplicated. So I'm going to duplicate it, delete children, parent it back to the base. And this is going to be our hip control. I also want to change the radius so I can find them easily. I'm going to make these ones 1.5. So now we have a simple, uh, the, skeleton, the spine has been duplicated. We have four joints and then the, uh, the two ends have been duplicated. These two end ones we're going to use to control our curve. So if we select the curve and select the two end joints, we're going to use a skin cluster. So I'm going to go to skin, uh, bind skin, smooth bind, check my options. I want selected joints, closest in hierarchy, uh, classic linear, definitely want normalized weights, max influence as one is fine, um, and that looks good. So let's hit apply. Now just like we did with these, uh, the Goblin Mesh, we need to set the skin weights. So I'm going to open up the Component Editor. And these top two CVs want to be uh, controlled by the shoulder, the shoulder control, which they are. And the bottom two want to be controlled by the hip control, and again they are. So it's just this middle one, it needs to be controlled by both. So at the moment it's on shoulder. So I'm going to add 0.5 to the hip control. 
So now um, the curve is skinned. So if we select these forward K controls and rotate them, it acts like a forward K. But if we select the shoulder control, we can translate it. Now you may notice if we translate up and down, not a lot happens. Now I'd like the spine to go wherever I put this control. So the next thing we're going to add is some stretch to these spine joints. Although we're not actually going to use scale, we're going to use the translation on the X so that a game engine can accept it. To do this, we're going to take the curve length divided by the original curve length to see how much the spine has been stretched. So let's start by opening up the hypershade and we need to create a curve info node. So if we go to general utilities, curve info. If you switch to the utilities tab, you can see our new curve info node. Now we need to connect our, our spline IK curve to this node. So I'm gonna select the curve and we're gonna use the connection editor to do this. So actually we need the the curve shape. So I'm going to hit cursor down to pick walk to the shape node and load that on the left side. And I'm going to select the curve info node and load it on the right side. Now as long as you have uh, shown on keyboard selected, if we, it's in alphabetical, so we need to find the world space and we can connect that to the input curve. So now the curve info node has the arc length, that is the length of our curve. So next we're going to need a multiply divide node. So again we go to create general utilities, uh, multiply divide, and I'm going to rename this uh, spine, oops, spine curve scale. Now we need to connect the curve info node or its arc length. So I'll reload that on the left. We need to connect it to uh, the input x, input x, sorry, input 1x on a multiply divide node. So we select uh, the arc length, select input 1x, and now input 2x, we can open up the attribute editor, and we just need to copy. Uh, copy input one, which is our, which is the curve length at rest. So I'm just going to copy and paste. So now we have multiply divide node, which takes uh, the curve length and divides it by the original curve length, which basically gives us a, a stretch value. So if you pulled the control up and made the curve twice as long, our output from the multiply divide node should be two. Actually, we forgot the most important part. Let's go back to the hypershade a minute. Uh, utilities, our multiply divide node needs to be set to divide. Now it will work. So next we need to take this scale value and connect it to the translate X of our joints. So to do this, I'm gonna create another multiply divide node. And the first joint we're gonna touch is uh, spine two. I'm going to rename this multiply divide spine 2 and we need to connect our scale value so if I middle mouse button that multiply divide node onto the new one and let go click on other we can take the output X and connect it to input 1x next we need to know the translate X of our joint so I'm going to copy that into the multiply divide node and paste it into input 2. So we now have the scale of our curve multiplied by the original rest position of this joint. So now we can take this joint, uh, add it, add selected to graph, and we can middle mouse button from the multiply divide node to the joint, hit other, and we can connect the output to which translate X. So now if we move the shoulder control 
you can see J spine 2 follows along. So now we need to do exactly the same to the duplicated spine joint. So again, I'm going to create a multiply divide node. I'm going to name it dupe spine free. And we're going to connect the scale value to it the same way, middle mouse over, over. Take our scale, put it into input 1x. And we need the translate x value. So I'm going to copy that and put it into input 2. And now lastly, graph it, add selected to graph, and middle mouse button, the multiply divide over the joint, hit other and connect the output x to which translate x and now both joints should scale so now the spine joints are all connected the last thing I want to do is connect the shoulder and the hips to the controls so this is nothing fancy, we're just going to use a parent constraint. So I'm going to select the, the shoulder control, shift select the J spine 3, and just add a parent constraint. And I'm going to do the same for the hips. So I'm going to select my hip control, shift select the uh, main root, and add a parent constraint. So now, using these two controls if I can select them we can pretty much pose the spine whatever we like and it will stretch and the same for the hips So as well as the IK controls, we also have these forward K controls. So if you want a forward K spine, you'll be able to select and rotate these. Now I keep calling these joints controls when really they're joints. Um, we're going to add some control curves at some point soon to make these easier to select and turn them into real controls. Having to select the joints to animate is, is not very good for a rig. Well, I've just noticed the time, so I think I'm going to stop the video here and we'll continue with part two where we will go into the controls and we need to set the twist on the spine and add a stretch gauge.